Hello there again, minions. Wheezy here. Today, I'm going to do something I don't think I've done in a while, which is just a gameplay commentary. Uh, about a week ago, when I was uh, ranking up the CX-9 in Modern Warfare after I unlocked it, I got in a game with an entire team that was using some really annoying tactics, uh, but it ended up being... They were not good, <laughs> um, but... They were annoying, and I thought that in addition to the gameplay being interesting and me doing rather well, uh, I thought it would be instructive to talk about what they were doing and uh, and the way that I uh, decided to counter it in order to, to have a good game instead of a game where I could have been uh, probably raging the entire time. So um, I think this is going to be a good one. Stick around, and uh, let's take a look and talk about it. All right, so I'm not planning on like telestrating anything today. Um, I'm just gonna play the gameplay. Uh, I might, I don't think I'm gonna rewind either, but I've got it kind of set up so I can if I want to. Um, what I was gonna show first is the kind of class setup I'm using. So it's the CX-9. Um, as I was, like I said, I was unlo I'm unlocking attachments for it in this game. So it's kind of the best attachments I have available at the time. Um, I, I recently switched this out. I was using the Akimbo Psychovs, which is basically a joke. It's basically like having a, a secondary shotgun that kind of shotguns for <laughs> 10 or 15 seconds. Um, but that's not, that's, that's kind of a joke sidearm. Uh, I was completing a mission challenge for getting health regen with the stim. Otherwise, I would normally be using um, Quick Fix for the perk one. Uh, Ghost is pretty much always my perk too, and then I'm using Spotter. Perk 3's kind of got some flexibility to it. Um, just in general this day, I, I had switched over to using Spotter because I was running into more equipment than usual. As it turns out in this match, there was even more equipment than I've ever seen in a match before. Um, so Spotter ended up being super useful. Uh, frag grenades, stims. So I'm just gonna kinda get over to the gameplay. I also popped a double weapon XP token. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna gonna get rolling on this and uh, and uh, kind of talk through it. So the reason I wanted to share this particular gameplay wasn't to show off the fact that I you know I got a a decent KD or score, which I ended up doing. Um, but it's because I came up against a team that was using really fucking irritating tactics, and um, and so I wanted to share that. I, that the way that I adapted to those tactics to still do well because what they're doing was irritating. These weren't particularly good players, but they were decently well coordinated. And I think you'll see what I mean as we as we get going. So um, this is a kill confirmed game, um, and then start. And so kind of just talk you through it, kind of as I experienced it, because just starting out. It's just a normal kill confirmed game. So I'm using the edge of the map, go to my Wheezy's War College map movement, um, looking for teammates. This was kind of my first clue. There was a guy already sitting up there in the corner, and when I walked around the corner, oblivious to the fact that he was there, he didn't really respond. So immediately, I've got a, I've got a clue that at least one of the players on their team was sitting in a corner and wasn't very responsive. Um, so I'm pushing through here. I see I see equipment set up. So there's a claymore there, a bouncing Betty there, and in this map especially with um, the upstairs room here, people love to sit up there and camp and defend it. So I so there's another bouncing Betty, another claymore. So already I'm seeing more equipment than I see in a normal match. There's just a ton of it. Um, so so I'm kind of like keeping these things in mind as I'm just cycling through the map using my normal map movement. I'm still playing a typical kind of kill confirmed uh, slayer kind of gameplay now. Um, we kind of end up in this kind of hornet's nest where their team is just buckled in back here. Um, and they're using a lot of equipment. Like there's stun grenades and flash grenades. Well, not stun grenades, I guess. There's mostly flash grenades. There were a l quite a bit of flash grenades in this match. Um, and just so you guys know, my whenever there's a uh, I get flashed uh, or stunned, um, typically my reaction is try to remember where I'm located, try to move behind cover based on memory, go prone, and if I'm, and if I'm not topped up on ammo, reload, because there's not much you can do when you're blind. Um, 
So there was kind of this stand up in this room and everybody was fighting outside that door. So I decided to back up and do a flank. So I'm kind of watching this flank here and trying to get them from the side. Um, and just figure out where there's movement. So I noticed that my team is kind of gone now, so they could kind of come from any direction. So I move back out here, run out of ammo for my CX-9, and I've got these Psychovs, which are just 160 rounds of hip fire madness. Um, so I've got to close the distance to this riot shield guy. I get flashed again. I very nearly get the kill on that, but uh, man, there that it's I'm I'm getting the impression already that this is gonna be target marked a weird team especially when you see a guy using the Kruger skin and a riot shield like it's not it's gonna be kind of irritating another guy might have been the same guy sitting in another corner people who just sit there in corners and wait for people to walk around go watch my Wheezy's War College video on map movement I mean you need to if you're gonna camp you need to be camping tactically meaning you need to be looking inside looking out not waiting for someone to come around a corner it's just don't do that i'm trying to get a grenade up in that window up there just because i figure that's it they seem to be one of those teams you can see this guy running that way like they're gravitating towards these campy locations right like that back corner with the stairwell here there's a bunch of equipment set up so i'm trying to get a, an angle on here to try and clear that out but Already, I'm so the first thing I'm doing before I'm trying to destroy those mines is look around because people set mines, there's people nearby. So I was looking to see if there's anyone to shoot before I cleared out the mines. I take a I take a hit from somewhere. Turns out there's a guy sitting behind a shield with a riot shield. Uh, so I'm looking for a higher angle on it, and especially with two people, I know if he he can't look at both of us at the same time. So I'm he's watching my teammate. So I'm waiting for him to turn so I can get the shot uh, when he moves the shield. But I mean it's. More and more, I'm starting to see how this team is operating. They're not moving around a lot. I can see they're all gathered back up in this corner again. You know, so so it's like, okay, so if they're going to kind of isolate themselves to a corner, what you don't want to do is just blindly come running around those corners because that's what they're waiting for, right? Matter of fact, here's another example, as I think I get flashed again. <laughs> and then I get killed by a guy who's literally hiding behind the fridge. Like... So when you when you come up against a team that's defensive camping, right? When they've got equipment set up and they're waiting for you to walk into their kill zone, don't do that. <laughs> don't don't play their game. So you got a couple of options when that happens. If they're if they're backed into a corners like that, equipment is your friend. Explosives especially help clear people out of corners so that you don't have to walk in there yourself. Um, especially something, the reason in Modern Warfare I like grenades over Simtex is you can cook grenades so that they can explode as soon as they go into an area, which gives the enemy, doesn't give the enemy time to react, turn around and run away. Simtex comes in and beeps and explodes. You don't get to cook those. So here I see Claymore set up. Again, I know these guys are being kind of sketchy and I can see there's a guy in the truck on the radar here. So I'm clearing out some of this equipment and I'm going to see if I can wall penetration the truck and I can't. So I decide to use some physics here and bounce the grenade off the wall into the truck and kill that guy. That one's going to be a short. Look out for that. That's that's some fucking video game geometry there. Um, <laughs> but my, uh, my CX-9 is out of ammo now. Um, and so I pick up this guy. Again, give you another idea of these people. This is what, an M16? It's either an M16 or a... Uh, M13, but I'm pretty sure it's an M16. Could be an M4. Doesn't matter. It's got a fucking sniper scope on it. So I, <laughs> either this guy's completing a challenge or he's just awful. Um, so I'm using somebody else's gun and it's not it's not a great one, but you know, it's what you got to do when you run out of ammo. So yeah, I'm not pushing through this equipment. I'm trying to keep it marked for my team. That's a cool thing about Spotter. It doesn't just let you see it like Engineer in Cold War. It lets you spot it for your team so they don't just walk into it. I checked that fridge. <laughs> <laughs> Fool me once. <laughs> Fool me once. Shame on you. Um, that fucking riot shield guy again. I'm just trying to decide whether or not I want to jump out and chase. But I decide, no, I'd rather just check and see if someone's flanking. This thing has a scope on it, so I need kind of a longer range engagement anyway. But I also don't want to sit up here. So, like, some people like this area because it's campy and defendy. I hate that because I don't want to be trapped in a corner. Even though I might have an advantageous position, I might want to use it for a kill or two. 
but if you stay up there, people will come back for you. And since your routes of escape are limited, you don't have much of an option. So I don't like getting myself pinned down like that. Um, so moving on through the map here now, I'm trying to find, they, they're not in that corner anymore, right? I locked down this corner. Okay, well these campers who are fighting for this corner are now somewhere else. So we gotta go find where they are. As it turns out, spoiler alert, they moved to the other campy spot on this map, which is the room upstairs on the other side. So you can see my team is kind of moving across the map in that direction now uh, towards where we're trying to figure out where the enemy is. So this is not a close range weapon, so I'm having to move more tactically than I might otherwise, um, especially with the CX-9 where I can kind of come across around corners when fights. But look at all of this. Look at, look at this. There's like what, two claymores, three bouncing Bettys, an equipment box. Like, oh my god. So, and they're, most of them are behind cover, so I can't like clear them out directly. I call in my cluster strike for two reasons. One, to try and clear some of the equipment, but also if anyone's coming in or out of that room, the cluster can kill them. But now I know, okay, they're up there. I can't run up there because they've got these explosives I can't clear out. I don't have a frag grenade anymore. I already used it. You know, so otherwise I would clear out this stuff with a frag grenade, but I can't do that. So now I'm trying to see if I can get an angle on the window from the other side, as I see that guy walking by as I'm trying to clear that claymore, or that bouncing Betty. Um, so I've got to see if I can safely get to an angle where I can shoot up into the window where they're almost certainly camping, right? So I have to be careful down here whether there's going to be people back there. And then now those shots, I'm worried someone's down below me, but or down at the bottom with me, but in reality, that's the people up in the window. So um, so now I'm looking for a safe angle for that window. And they've got another shield set up there. He's got his riot shield. These people, I just don't beat these people. Just, just, just don't beat these people. It's... So this gun isn't great. The accurate for it being a, uh, having a sniper scope on it, the recoil's so high you can't really, it's just not accurate enough to try and to, to have the kind of accuracy you need to get hits on someone using a riot shield when you've got like this much space to, to get hit. So moving in a little bit closer again, I don't have a frag to throw up there or I would totally use a frag to help clear that out. Um, and uh, so I'm, yeah, I'm trying to decide what I want to do because I can't really attack them through that window with this gun. So I decide that I'm going to let the people in that room stay. <laughs> And I'm going to kill anyone that tries to get back to it. Plus the game's almost over, 30 seconds, 72 kills, so... Um, so now I'm just... I'm also waiting to get my support chopper. So I need one more kill for my support chopper. I know someone's going to be running back up to that room. Hey, there you are. So I get that support chopper, call it in before the game ends, and now I'm just waiting for more people to show up. Uh, I decide I want to go grab the tag so that we can end this match. Um, but then there's two guys here, get one... Somehow a Simtex came in, and I got, apparently I got shotgunned, but that's a game over. Uh, despite doing really well, because what did I, let's see what the final score was. That was really irritating. So I went 28-3 and three with 19 confirms. That was a good game, but man, is that irritating. Like, I'd rather have a stand-up fight any day of the week than having to, like, hunt these corner monkeys <laughs> it's it's just it can be such an irritating like way to, to have to play against people and the match didn't even end for score limit it ended on time <laughs> that's so bad but yeah hopefully uh let's let's switch over here to uh to the camera so hopefully you guys enjoyed that hopefully uh it was at least entertaining hopefully a little bit informative if you come up against people who are just laying equipment everywhere and sitting back and just trying to I just don't please don't play like that and if you do equipment's your friend not walking into their trap is is your best bet in general don't do what the other team wants you to do right even if it feels like the right thing to do like capture an objective push on their position if they want you to do it don't fucking do it it's a trap See you in the next one, Minions. Bye.